The first year, I really called people that I knew. I was talking to Gail King. She said to me, you know, Maria, you really should have Oprah. It's your first conference. I said, no, 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 no. I, I want to make sure I get it good before I uh, invite Oprah. Then Oprah called me and said, you know, how's the conference going? I said, I don't really know what I'm doing yet, but I just want you to know you're more than welcome to come. She goes, OK, I'll come. Okay. And right away, it put us on the map. The first person I wanted to invite was Linda Ellerbee uh, because she was a hero of mine as a journalist. I loved the way she wrote. You have that same power. Nobody has to grant it to you. It is yours. I invited Tom Brokaw uh, to moderate a panel of uh, women. I'm uh, Maria's feeble idea of gender diversification at this conference, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I remember when Jane Fonda was ready to walk out, she was so nervous and um, to stand in front of 15,000 women and talk about her own journey. And, uh, Sarah Ferguson was terrific, and she came out and talked about feeling like she had shamed herself and her family. It's a deep conference. It's inspiring people, um, have really transformative experiences at the conference. It was like the first time I'd seen myself where I looked like the girl that I used to be before Teddy died. Uh, Susan St. James came there to talk for the first time about losing her son. And Elizabeth Edwards she stood up and talked about who she was as a woman with breast cancer. Does the struggle against cancer seem too big for me alone? It does. But I am not alone. When Tim Russert spoke... I always want you and Grandpa on my side. That was really one of the great moments for me. Time is our most precious commodity. You never get it back. I, I'd known him for a long time, but I never saw him kind of that vulnerable. Uh, the Ingenui Condoleezza Rice conversation, that was one of the one of the best conversations. Certainly one of the best conversations was uh, Barbara Walters talking to Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. And uh, it was funny because Barbara Walters had wanted to interview her for many, many years, and she had been avoiding Barbara Walters for many, many years. I didn't know that at the time. There is one question that I think everyone wants to know, Justice. What do you wear under those robes? <laughs> well, whatever I want, it's not gonna show. <laughs> in investing, you wanna buy stock in a company that has a business that's so good that an idiot can run it. Because sooner or later, one will. <laughs> I think people were shocked at how funny Warren Buffett was. America, we are asking you, to help put humanity back on this earth. Thank you. You know, I'm interested in what men have to say. I like men. I've used the conference to really work out my own journey. So I talked about uh, losing my job and losing my identity, losing my paycheck. I always had a great relationship with my mother, but it certainly changed as she got sick, and I spoke a lot about that. My mother! fractured her hip at 4.15 this morning. And then she went to the emergency room and then she came back to the conference in a wheelchair, waving to everybody, wheeling around. Don't get up on me, don't get up. No! And she proceeded to have like instances like that almost at every conference. Certainly one of the highlights of my whole life was giving her a Minerva Award. I can give you, in return for this award, that gift is the gift of my daughter, Maria. Well, Gloria Steinem is a, a trailblazer, and I don't think we would be where we are as women if it weren't for Gloria Steinem. I, I was so thrilled to be able to honor her with the Minerva Award. Same with Billie Jean King. I grew up watching Billie Jean King. I thought I could beat any boy because Billie Jean King did, just the same way Sally Ride. Um, she changed the way young girls can dream uh, about being an astronaut, about math and science. The Minervas are always just incredibly inspiring and moving. I invited the Dalai Lama the first year, I invited him the second year. So I went to India and I took a little plane and I went up to Damsala and I invited him personally and he goes, okay, I will be there. All of these things are trying to accumulate things. How? <laughs> and kind of halfway through the interview, he put on a little visor. But how do you, how do you achieve a simpler, quieter, you have to take off the hat. What's with the hat? How's that? The beer. And I was like, oh my 
goodness, what is he doing? What's in the hat? Oh, no, this oh. was a very strong light. Oh, okay, okay, no. put it on, okay. Oh. <laughs> Spouses of presidential candidates. Mrs. Obama, she sat on the stage the last time as a very little known uh, wife of a senator from Illinois. And Mrs. Obama comes back um, as the first lady of the United States of America. I love this conference. I love growing it. First, we added the Night at the Village, which was a huge success for women to come to connect. Then we added a Day of Health, Wellness, and Transformation. This year, we brought the Modern House Call to Women of California. Free medical care to women who have none. Free financial care and services to women who have none. And we added the March for Alzheimer's. Thousands of people signed up to help us find a cure for Alzheimer's. You really come out of here wanting to live a different life and walk a different road. That was incredible. And, uh, loved this job. Turned out to be the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Each person who spoke at this conference, each woman who bought a ticket, it's time to celebrate all of the people that participated in getting us to the best forum in the world for women. It touches women every day. It works to make women's lives better every day. And it's the best party in the nation. <laughs>